Michael O'Connor in his final season is back to his best and his sidestep is as sharp as ever. Canberra also have major injury worries. Laurie Daly and Brad Clyde are out, so too is Phil Blake. Coach Tim Sheens has moved Mal Meninga from the centres into the second row and made four positional changes, mostly in the back line. Still, the Canberra lineup is similar to Manley's. Big, robust forwards and plenty of pace and skill in the backs. Halfback Ricky Stewart with his kicking, passing and occasional running game will steer the Canberra attack. We think of these two sides as having entertaining attacking back lines, but Artie, the match could hinge on which forward pack gets the upper hand. That could be right, Warren. Much of the credit uh, for the resurgence of Manly over the last six weeks could go down to the tremendous form of John Jones and the much improved form of Ian Roberts. Coach Tim Sheens has recognised that strength and in an attempt to bolster his pack, he's moved Mal Meninga there. But I think that uh, that has caused a lot of changes in the Canberra side, and I would think that it would have an unsettling effect on the side. Even though Canberra have the home ground advantage, I'm going for Manly in a chiller. <laughs> Near zero conditions, and Canberra and Manly are playing for survival. From Cairns in the north to Perth in the west, across Australia, you are watching the country's premier rugby league competition, live and uninterrupted on ABC Television, your national network. The wind blowing in from the snowy mountains and a few drops of rain falling just a little while ago, though the sun's shining at the moment. But it certainly is a very cold day here in Canberra. And here is our own ABC brass monkey, Johnny Peard. <laughs> you know, Warren, the voice is still intact at this stage. But uh, I couldn't think of a better place to send the politicians. It was going to be cold like this all the time. But very, very big game today. Very important. Both tides on 16 points. The key to it, probably the kicking game of Ricky Stewart, but he's going to have to face the breeze in the first half. The wind's gone to the Manly side. Let's see how they handle this. Look for a big, big game from Jeff Tooby. He's been in really good form lately. And quite a few changes in this Canberra side. Uh, Arthur, they've really mixed it around, haven't they? There's they something should. like, I, I said a moment ago, four changes, but if you go through it, there's something like six positional changes, forwards and backs. Yeah, I can't believe just to uh, replace Melman Inga, they haven't uh, moved Daryl McDonald to the fullback spot. Well, Tim Sheens must know what he's doing. No doubt the team has been training with the thought that Bradley Clyde would be out. And look at those fans, well rugged up. You really do have to be a die-hard Raider fan to be here to support the team. And a few Sea Eagles. They know that they're a long way from the sunny North Shore of Sydney. The Raiders on the way out. The Green Machine. They're bad and mean, says their theme song. Gary Coyne in the lineup. Paul Osman, a big game expected from him. The former St George prop. Playing well this year with the Raiders. At fullback, Brett Mullins on one winger, Sean Hoppy, with Jason Croker and Matthew Wood in the centres, Daryl McDonald onto the wing, Scott Gale at 5'8", Ricky Stewart at halfback, David Ferner at lock forward, with Gary Coyne and Mal Meninga in the second row, Darren Fritz, Steve Walters and Paul Osborne in the front row, and the coach is Tim Sheens. Jeff Toovey has been in good form for Manly. Manly with a much more settled lineup. Daryl Williams at fullback, Craig Hancock on one wing, Des Hasler and Michael O'Connor in the centre, Frank Stokes getting a chance on the wing, Cliff Lyons at 5'8", Jeff Turvey halfback, John Jones in at lock forward, Ian Roberts and John Grieve in the second row, Tony Mestrov, David O'Donnell and Martin Bella the front row, coached by Graham Lowe. And there won't be a national anthem before the game because it is simply too cold for everyone to stand still. They'd be shivering. It's reminiscent of the kangaroo tour when the players were in France just a couple of seasons back at the end of 1990 when they were wearing track suits and gloves during the game. Graham Lowe might be used to it from his New Zealand days. And he looks as if he's pretty keen. Looks fairly relaxed, but it is a big game. Only one meeting at Bruce Stadium between these two teams. It was in 1991. Manly thrashed Canberra 46-12. The referee is Greg McCallum. This all-important game started by Frank Stokes. And dropping it backwards is Jason Croker. It was a smart decision by Canberra to run into the breeze, especially at Matthew Ridge is on the bench. 
And the first penalty of the game goes to Canberra against John Jones, not clearing away from the man he put on the ground. Now well, Meninga came up to think about a quick tap. He's going to take it, running into the breeze. And John Jones, there he is, conceding the penalty. But Meninga taking the tap and immediately getting play moving. So we see the Canberra tactics running into the wind. They are not going to bother with the kick. It's a very strong wind blowing right down the centre of the ground as Darren Fritz takes it over the halfway line. Well, that decision surprised me. I thought that he would have uh, burned up a little bit of time and taken the tap. Yeah, I think it, if you're running into such a stiff breeze as this, I think if you can chew a bit of time up and really restrict the uh, possession of the team you're playing, I think you're heading the right direction. Here's a good run by Walters from Dummy Half. And the Manly caught offside in the marker area. Never back the five metres or... Not too sure whether he's pinned a marker or a man inside the I five. I think he drilled that Ian Roberts never marked up and uh, Ian Roberts questioned that decision by referee McCallum. And give some credit to the previous play the ball by Paul Osborne. He crawled his way forward. He wasn't held. He got the referee's nod of approval and that kept Manly going backwards. Well, there's Matthew Ridge. Apparently it's a disciplinary measure by Graham Lowe. Ridge was expected back from New Zealand earlier than Wednesday and when he arrived late and missed a training session, Lowe cracked down. But no doubt we will see Matthew Ridge in the game at some stage, you would think. The ball rolls off the mound as David Ferner tries to place it. Manly have won 15 of the 20 meetings between these two teams since 1982. When Canberra started those early years, they battled for a while, but Canberra have won four of the last six. The wind direction blowing into the face of Mal Meninga for the most part at around eight to, well, you can see it bouncing around a bit, eight to 13 kilometres an hour. David Ferner taking this shot at goal. He's already amassed 66 points for the season, four tries and 25 goals, and the ball's rolled off the mound. Course, may be necessary for someone to hold it. Yes, and of course, David Ferner, the son of uh, Chairman of Selectors, Don Ferner, who normally travels down to see young David play every weekend. The ball placed upright, which makes it even more likely to roll off the mound, I suppose. Ferner moves into it. Handy-looking kick, and the flags are up. First points on the board to Canberra, and they lead two points to nil. After just two and a half minutes of play, it was a good set of six uh, by Canberra. No doubt they'd be very happy with the start. Tim Sheens, who's guided this Canberra outfit to such success over the last couple of seasons. Two grand finals won, and then losing last year to Penrith. John Jones with a deep kick. It could be too deep. It is. It went out on the fall over the dead ball line. Only by inches, that breeze too strong behind the kick, and it's a penalty back at halfway. A yeah, bad mistake by John Jones, but that emphasises the strength of this breeze. Great way for Canberra to pick up 50 metres. Only inches in it. Well, they're taking their time this time. I think Steve Wallace is going to take the tap, just chew up a bit of time, and it splits the charges up with the hitter. Good judgment by the Canberra players at the back. Brett Mullins was back there on the goal line. In the earlier results, a big win to Manly in under 21s by 32 points to 6. And in reserve grade, it was a 12-all draw. Those two teams down the bottom of the ladder in reserve grade, but they, and they were playing to avoid the wooden spoon as Fritz goes up the blind side. Good takers by Canberra. They've, they've decided to take Manly on up the middle. Scott Gale pops a kick through, chasing it as Croker. Hancock slips over. Gale McDonald goes forward, back inside. Was that tackle too early? Referee says... Well, there's punches now between Williams and Croker. Darrell Williams and Jason Croker. Trading blows. Referee right on top of them. Yeah, the one would have to think the penalty will go to Canberra here. The player being tackled without the ball. We see McDonald going down the touchline. Passing the ball. Is it what is it? Back down the touchline. Passing the ball. Croker. Jason Croker. The man tackled yeah. by Darrell Williams. That's exactly right. Take, it in, take without the ball. And, uh... When Scott Gale put the kick through, Hancock tried to turn, but he slipped, and it allowed McDonald to race onto the ball. Now, watch the man, Williams, 
hits him well just as the ball right. but it looks as though the ball has bound he has dropped the ball cold so the well, third penalty in a row well the indications are that the uh, player was tackled without the ball fourth penalty in fact it's the one from the restart of play and Ricky Stewart kicks backwards to give his team some more room to move rather than being allowing allowing the defensive team to sweep up on them four penalties in the first five minutes all going to the Raiders Meninga has it 15 meters out Gary Coyne who's been selected on the bench in recent weeks by Tim Sheens but bringing him into the starting lineup for Brett Hetherington Stewart out to Ferner good tackle by Cliff Lyons who moved up quickly Still only 15 metres out. To the open side. Stewart, long ball for Gale. Matthew Wood, shorter ball for Croker who cuts through. Good tackle by Stokes. Frank Stokes across there. Now Stewart going across field, throwing dummies, still going with his Stewart cuts through and out paces Desi Hazlitt to the line. They held off him and held off him and finally the gap opened up for Ricky Stewart. Manly mesmerised by Stewart, holding the ball out in front of him. A couple of little dummies on the inside. And still they didn't come in to take him. And he must have run around six players or so in the end. Here it is, Stewart, some 15 metres in from touch on the far side. One dummy, two dummies, and finds the opening in between Des Hasler and the Manly player on the outside. And Stewart too fast. Yeah, a little bit of deception here by Ricky Stewart. The ball and Des Hasler, the man at fault. He took block, the dummy run there by Mal Meninga, dragging a, uh, a defender, but really Des Hazard should have attacked Ricky Stewart. He took block once he came across field there. Ricky Stewart missed the start of this season with a groin injury. Also worried by knee ligament problems. But a tremendous player in form at the present time. Fifth try of the year. David Ferner with a difficult attempt at goal. The eighth highest point scorer in the competition. That's a pretty good effort. Phil Blake on the sidelines with a calf muscle strain, which I believe he suffered at training. And he has been in great form, Phil Blake, the last couple of weeks. He has really been back to the brilliant Phil Blake of a couple of seasons back. Rumour has it that he could be going to England at the end of the season. And with Laurie Daly out for what looks like three or four weeks. In fact, Laurie Daly here wearing a brace on his right leg after medial ligament damage. Ferner with a difficult one. The wind will hit this one. There it is, look, swinging away. Well wide in the end. But the Raiders with a great start to this game after eight minutes of play, 6-0 they lead. A wonderful start into the breeze, Canberra. Showing a lot of width in their attack and giving Manly some problems. We look at Ricky Stewart looking for... There's a couple of good decoys, including Big Mal. He pulled two in. And if we'd seen Ricky Stewart before, it often opens up for him. He's a good player, this fellow, with great awareness. And an amazing statistic. Canberra are yet to make a tackle in this game. You can see Matthew uh, Rich warm up. I'm just wondering whether he will be thrown into the fray very shortly because of this gale that they have at their back. Well, man, we simply haven't had the ball as yet. Oh, well, that's right. They've had uh, great uh, control, Canberra, plus the uh, assistance of a, a number of penalties. Stewart with a kick downfield, which is a great kick into the wind. From 10 metres, his own side of halfway. He finds touch 15 metres out, and that is the first deep kick by Stewart in the game into this wind. And when uh, Ricky Stewart was sliding across field, this at great kick from Ricky Stewart to find touch but uh, Ricky Stewart gliding across field Michael O'Connor decided to uh, stay with his man and move up quickly and it just gave that hole to uh, Ricky Stewart and he was able to get home Manly inside their own quarter with Cliff Lyons and there it is the first possession for Manly Frank Stokes hasn't had many opportunities in first grade this season Stokes it can work against you psychologically if you're running with the wind and you don't have the amount of points up you expected. It's a psychological ploy. The Raiders will be hoping to hang, hang in there, but they're in front at this stage. As Lyons kicks early in the tackle count, with that wind behind it, it's gone way out on the fall. 
misjudgment by Lyons. He didn't try to kick too deep. He just placed it downfield, but gave it too much nevertheless. Well, well Cliff shakes his head in disbelief, and uh, I think that that was the same with the kickoff by Johnny Jones. This uh, wind is uh, so strong. Stewart puts it in. Ferner breaks from lock forward with it. Mal Meninga in that pack in the second row. In the first round, it was a win to Manly at Brookvale, 28 points to 16. Manly's got Stokes at fullback and Williams in the centre and Michael O'Connor on the wing. O'Connor on the wing. And it doesn't appear that anyone's injured at the moment. Gale has a run himself. Ball is a dummy half, but Gale played it forward and the ref says... But the Manly marker wasn't directly in front of him. For a moment, I thought it was going to go the other way. But the yep. marker didn't face up. Yeah, once again, uh, referee Greg McCallum ruling that the uh, markers weren't square on. Five penalties have gone to Canberra now. Five to nil. And well, we see there Johnny Greve just not uh, marking up properly in an offside position. The referee had no alternative but to give the penalty against Manly. Manly doing it tough in this first 10 minutes of play. Look at those penalties. Five in a row to Canberra. And the Raiders leading 6-0 with a chance to add two more here. Michael O'Connor must be concerned by the early trend here, skippering the Seagulls. And as John pointed out, finds himself on the wing at this point of the game. David Ferner kicking into the wind from 30 metres out. And the ball rolls off the mound. Well, this seems to... This has already happened a number of times. Ferner around the corner style of kicker. Like most are these days. Giving it plenty of concentration. Hits it well. Good looking kick from Ferner. And it's the flags are up once more. Good start. Two from three for him. And the one he missed was a difficult one. And Canberra lead eight points to nil. Well rugged up in the crowd. It was a tremendous start by the Canberra Raiders. Uh, but as you pointed out, Manly have had no possession whatsoever. Laurie Daly watching on. Keys had a bad season with injuries. I'm sure he'd love to be out on that field. He said that he felt as if he hadn't really given Canberra full value for money this season because of his representative commitments and injuries every other day. And John Jones not making a much of that the second time. The kickoff, and we see some rugged defence by Martin Bella and Johnny Jones. Manley now trying to keep Canberra down inside their quarter. Good offload from Ferner back to Walters. An attack this season. Canberra have been putting plenty of points on the board. 323 to Manley's 258. And that's why Canberra attacking well out wide. And Happy's cut right through. Happy over the halfway. In front of him is Stokes. And Hasler comes from behind. Ricky Stewart looms up one wide of the ruck. Wants the pass. He's got men out wide. Standing there is Osman. Sizes it up. Slips a pass late away to Mullins coming in from fullback. The Canberra backs didn't really line up as well as they might have to take advantage. And now Stewart drives Manley back. Tremendous play by Hoppy, and Hoppy is a speed demon, but an equally good kick once again by Ricky Stewart. Well, I wonder whether or not this was what Canberra really wanted. Seemed to be some comment among the Raiders there. That, Why did you do that, Ricky? They had Manley at sixes and sevens. They certainly did. They were having problems with covering in defence. Oh, Canberra concede the scrum penalty, breaking too early from the scrum. So Manley finally with a relieving penalty. Matthew Ridge on the sideline. Who will he replace? There don't appear to be any injuries out there. Frank Stokes Frank is going to be. Yes, Frank Stokes the man to be replaced by. And now Canberra caught up inside the 10 metres. On the blind side there. A few words exchanged between Big Martin Bella and Paul Osborne. 
second penalty in a row goes to Manley and carries them down towards the halfway. I think Marty taking the ball up and uh, a late shot, I think, on <laughs> Martin Bella, but nothing of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, championship wrestling, he's a contender for it. David O'Donnell put his hand out to deflect the ball from Paul Osmond's head as Stokes leaves the field. Six more tackles. David O'Donnell for Manley. Raw went up then because they thought that O'Donnell had knocked the ball on a dummy half. Bella, I don't know whether he was really expecting it. Only 14 metres out. Greve, Tuvi gets them moving. Lyons tried the quick pass, would knock it down. Six more tackles for Manley. That ball, ball coming off the hip of the Canberra player. Tuvi back to his feet. Pressure here on Canberra. Lyons holds it up, trying to get it to Jones. Canberra going backwards, quickly trying to reset their defence. Here goes Mistral, charging for the line. Only a metre out. Skinny up the left. Lyons, Lyons still going. Pops a short pass away. Ian Roberts is close. Last tackle coming up. On the blind side, Lyons can see the opening himself, but the defence holds. Great Canberra defence. Manly six tackles from close range, and Canberra have held on. Meninga with the tackle. Yes, yeah, certainly good scrambling defence, but I thought there was a real chance out to the left if uh, Cliff Lyons didn't decide to go on with it. The ball should have been moved further to the left, and I think the try was on. Now Canberra trying to work it away from the danger zone. Hoppy played it forward. Wasn't marked. There's the total tackles. Uh, you see, Manly have had to do all the tackling, and certainly Canberra have certainly dominated possession. If Darren Fritz gives a big don't argue to Desi Hasler. Osman working one wide of the ruck. Using his strength to pick up another metre or two. Do they play the ball quickly, uh, John, to the Canberra side? Yeah, rolling it very well, well, catching Manly on the back foot. It's good yards into the wind. Stewart with Tuvi flying through on him, and the kick bounces high over the top of Craig Hancock, who could do nothing but watch it. Well, Craig just holds his hands up and says, well, how can you beat this? And we see that ball there just rolling in on him, straight over Craig Hancock. Just watch the hands go up in disbelief. The metres gained, Canberra dominating. Look at that, 423 to Manley's 122. And in terms of time in possession, 11 minutes versus four. But Manley steadying the ship over the last couple of minutes. There's a wild pass come out from Tuvi to Williams. Ricky Stewart's kicked three times and found the line on three occasions. That's chewing up a bit of time, too, for the scrum to go down. So pretty good play by Canberra. And Arthur, what do you make of Graham Lowe's tactics to put Ridge on the sideline, on the bench, and then bring him into the game after only 10 minutes of play. I mean, does it really prove a point or not? I mean, if he's... Well, well he left him out for disciplinary reasons, but he's cost his team one interchange. Well, I'm sure he got the point across. Well, he might have, but at the, at the end of the game, I'd hate to be one short of a, wanting to make a replacement. Brett Mullins. Chased by Lyons. Good attempt, but not good enough. But Martin Bell is there to meet him. Good effort, too, from Hancock. Now it's Ferner. And secondly, what do you make of Michael O'Connor being out on the wing? Well, that certainly is a strange decision to put Michael O'Connor onto the flanks. Walters loses the ball, and the referee says it was Steve Walters' fault. Well, the alternative to putting uh, Michael O'Connor onto the flank is probably uh, putting Darrell Williams onto the flank, but Darrell Williams is a better defensive player. And here we see the ball just popping out there. Steve Wall is just losing that ball. Well, what I'm getting at is I wonder whether Graham Lowe compromised himself. As uh. Tuvi goes straight through from the scrum, he beats them all pointlessly and scores the try. Canberra forwards just coming out of the scrum could only look in disbelief. Tuvi has gapped them. He did the same thing in, the, in another game just a few weeks ago. Scores Manley's first try. Sheer speed from Jeff Tuvey. Just carving a path wide and through the Canberra backs. 
And, well, as I say, it had happened before they knew it. Well, it started from the scrum base, but David Ferner, the man, not to get out uh, quickly enough. Can we see it? You see it? David Ferner there on your left. Unfortunately for him, he, his, uh, he probably was still in the scrum when Turvey made his decision to skirt from the scrum base. Jeff Turvey had a shoulder problem early in the season, missed the very early games, but now in tremendous form and seems to have no problems, doesn't wear shoulder pads, a pint-sized powerhouse, really. And Canberra, after dominating the early stages of the game, suddenly back behind their posts. And Matthew Ridge on the field in time to take the first shot at goal. And it's rolled off the mound. It's getting repetitious. And Graham Lowe will be pleased with that try. He must have been worried by the opening flurry from Canberra and the way penalties were running against his side. But everything has turned around in the last couple of minutes. Ridge back from test duty with New Zealand in that series against Great Britain. Not too far from the posts. And they're easy kicks for Ridge. He adds two points, and now there are only two points in it. Canberra eight, Manly six. Well, a Canberra mistake allowed a scrum win to Manly. And this little fella, he's a heart and soul of Manly Oringa. He moves a lot quicker than a lot of people think. Very deceptive runner. And uh, as I said, he's been a kingpin of the Manly side all season. The scrum win followed Steve Walters losing the ball in possession. So it was a costly error. Here's John Jones steaming forward, wearing the St. George style thigh pads. I do emphasise their lack of possession. This is the Tony Mestrop. This is only one of four hit ups that they've done in this half in 20 minutes. So it must have been a little bit frustrating for the Martin Bellas and the Johnny Jones and the Ian Roberts not having possession. Des Hasler beats some weak defence. Gary Coyne was one who missed, but not the only one. Manly making ground now as Ridge runs onto it. O'Connor at dummy half, doubling around. Puts the kick through on the last tackle. And Daryl McDonald and Brett Mullins can only watch it trail over the sideline. Yeah, a good kick by Michael O'Connor. Jumped out of the dummy half position, but skirted around to the right and just put this end on end and made to about 25 metres the easy way. The pressure once again on the Canberra pack. You see the errors um, by Manley and 12 of those are missed tackles, which is surprising that the, uh, the score is only 8-6, but they'll have to tighten up their defence, man. And of course, they've been subjected to a lot of pressure by the Canberra side. Ferner, met by Greve over the top. Solid hit. John, how would you rate this breeze? It's at least a 10-point breeze, isn't it? <laughs> well, if you can speak in points or coldness, I think <laughs> it's uh, far more than that, but uh, very strong. Meninga adjusting to his role in the forwards, where he has played quite a few games, both for Canberra and Australia. You see, most people would give their right leg to kick like that with the wind but this fella's doing it against the wind so he's going to spell trouble for manly in the second half yeah i'm a little bit surprised obviously the breeze is blowing across that way he's elected to go that side every time and uh the winger hasn't dropped back or the fullback hasn't guarded that side at all you can see the strength of the wind in the gums he has magnificent timing of the kick ricky stewart he doesn't seem to put any more effort into it than any other kicker but they just go that extra 20 meters Hasler. John, you uh, did a bit of kicking in your time. What is it about Ricky, Chir Ricky Stewart's kicking style that makes him so effective? I suppose the same way as measuring a goal for Warren, they just got timing. But when he kicked to that left uh, left hand touch line, all the kicks have been. He kicked on the back of the ball, so he got a nice run, point to point, a nice run all the time. So you don't have to kick it all that all that strongly. Here's a good break by O'Connor. O'Connor beats Stewart and he finds Hancock outside, down the touch line, goes Hancock, great race. He beats Mullins' tackle. Superb try. Great wingers finished by Craig Hancock. When he got the ball, he still had a lot to do. Brett Mullins 
is one of the fastest men playing rugby league and Hancock got in and away from him. Yeah, the problem here is that it was a great break by O'Connor, but this ball is probably only about a metre forward. It all started back way upfield with John Greve in the tackle, slips it back to O'Connor. O'Connor gets away from a Ricky Stewart tackle in a moment as he goes across field and suddenly the little swerve to get inside Stewart and the others caught napping as well. Over the halfway, that pass floating forward may be out to Hancock. And Mullins grasping, desperate tackle, misses. Tremendous effort from Hancock. Yeah, this seemed to be just an all flow. There didn't seem to be any concern because there's plenty of the best. But just watch Steve Walters as he gets caught up in the back there. He could have got a hold of Michael O'Connor, but we see the ball floating forward. He gets it well in front of that... Uh, 35 metre mark and I thought that ball definitely floated about a metre forward. It certainly carried forward and uh, well it may have carried forward more than you would allow for the momentum. Need to see the wide angle to really see it. Hancock joined Manly in 1988. Manly Junior and 31 years of age but with that sort of speed he'll be going around for quite a few years to come. A Johnny Ferguson type who we saw just a little while ago in the grandstand. I suppose Craig Hancock would feel that's almost an insult to be compared to the age of Johnny Ferguson when he finished. What was it, 37, 38, something like that? Well, he claims that. <laughs> we should look at the forward pass on a big wide shot. Matthew Ridge makes no mistake. Two more points. Manly now in control of the match after a shaky start. 12 points to eight. What looked like just a, just a hit up there. Two players in the tackle. Coach wouldn't be pleased with that. A simple pop back. But look at the player that he popped back to. Ricky Stewart went just up out of the line. Hancock used his foot. Uh, O'Connor used his footwork. There's the pass to uh, Hancock. Now look at Mullins is coming across and was checked initially, but couldn't regain his speed. And the good work by Hancock in and away. A deep kick by Canberra, and that surely was not done by Williams. It was in the in-goal area. Well, he realised the ball had evaded them all and was going to go over the dead ball line, which would have meant... Well, I don't know what he was out. trying to do here, Ridge, but Ridge is an international player. He just tried to... It's going to be the same result, a line drop out, whichever way it goes, but he, he rakes that ball back, uh, Darrell Williams, rather. So the drop out down to Canberra. And Mullins has got it. I suppose in the end result it didn't make much difference because if it had managed to get over the dead ball line, it would have been a dropout anyway. Meninga. The joy by Canberra exploiting that short side and then going for the long balls on the far side. Croker, neat footwork from him. Good tackle by Lyons. Gale at dummy half. Osman with Fritz outside him. All the way, let him go, let him go. On the 22. Coin. Back inside to Stewart. Gale standing deep. Stepping inside is Walters. The Australian hooker gets it away to Gary Coyne. Keeping it alive, Canberra. Moving Manly around, looking for a chink. Fifth tackle. Stewart. Up she goes, and this could bring snow down. Underneath it is Ridge. It's an awkward one. The wind took it away, but he took it brilliantly. Yeah, tremendous work by Matthew Ridge. There was a little bit of pressure in the shape of uh, Fritz coming down on him and uh, showed some cool nerves in that situation. Uh, very difficult when you're a fullback and the wind is coming from behind your back. You're waiting underneath it and at the last minute it starts to go away from you. Mestrov goes hard up the centre. Both these teams equal seventh on the ladder. Playing to stay in the race for the semi-finals. Whichever team loses is done for 92. Deep kick over the top of Mullins. Did he get a finger on that? Yeah, he thought he had it covered, young Brett Mullins, but that just kept sailing through the air and uh, he mistimed it. But he's uh, making a good hit up the turn of the football here. He got away from Hasler, but not too deep. Again, 50 metres there. Mullins trap, 25 metres out from his own posts. Darrell McDonald. Quick play the ball. 
We had to be offside. If you allowed the quick play the ball, the ball is trying to win a penalty there, but the ball goes out to Gale and the blinds. Gale filling in for Laurie Daly at 5'8". Stewart. Up distance can he get this time? Not as uh, successful as it goes down to Ridge. Gets away from Gale, but a good chase by Mal Meninga. Who said Mal's not as mobile these days in defence? And here at the top uh, defensive was Canberra. Uh, Paul Osborne leading the way with five there, and I suppose that uh, is relative to the time and possession that they've enjoyed. But you see Manly there with David O'Donnell leading the way with ten. Lions. Kicks. He had a deep back line. None of them were up ready to chase. Yeah, the mind, nice touch. Yeah, the mind boggles what uh, Ricky Stewart will do with this breeze in the second half. Yeah, he'll be kicking from goal line to goal line, won't he? Not wrong. Might be a little strong for him, Arthur. I think he'll have to find the line. <laughs> Lions pushes Canberra back. Now, Ricky Stewart, the former rugby union player who can can really control not just his kicking game but his passing game to perfection from penalty has gone to canberra well i think he's pitched the whole back row of manly for uh, breaking too early in fact i think i heard the referee say i told you to stay in the scrum well when he had no, given the, when he had given the penalty he was pointing to uh, Johnny Jones, Ian Robertson, Johnny Green, they were all out of the scrum. Wall is with the tap. Stewart gives it to Hoppy. Darren Fritz. A couple of short passes before they used the big man, but he was easily tackled. Now it's Osmond out to Ferner. Manley's defence driving them sideways. Croker. Great defence by Toby once again. He's an inspiration, Toby. Meninga turns on the pace, leaves O'Donnell behind. Now it's Wood. That was good work by O'Donnell. He had been pushed off by Meninga, but uh, got up off the deck and made the other tackle. Fritz steams up the blind side. He's five metres short of halfway. Fifth tackle. Stewart drives it low for the line. He wasn't on his favourite side of the field, so kept it low. Picked up 20 metres, uses up some time. And wouldn't Canberra love to have this man, Gary Belcher, on the field? What a miserable season he's had, out for virtually the entire season with a leg injury. And it was the slow start to the season which really did hit Canberra. They lost three of their first four games when Stuart, Daly and Belcher were on the injured list. And then they hit the representative season and continued to struggle. Manly working a move there, waiting for Matthew Ridge to inject himself into the back line, but it's going to stay. Maybe they practiced that move on Tuesday night and Matthew wasn't there. They come back to the blind side, but Lyons changes his mind, much to the surprise of O'Donnell. Had plenty of men out wide, but the Canberra defence was pretty well set. Ridge making it a low kick, and it goes touch in goal. He was careful not to put it too high so that it went too far, but he misjudged by a metre in his direction and distance. Well, we have a look. This is just about a pitching wedge, this one, but uh, it does go too long. It's going touch in goal. Canberra take their time to go back to the 22 for the tap. Osborne. Flicks it out the back. Oh, the referee must have called Howell. Well... That's bad luck for Paul Osmond. He was fighting to offload the ball. Obviously, the referee's call came just that fraction earlier than the pass, and Manly get a gift penalty. It's certainly a tough call, but I was just wondering whether we, uh, Paul Osmond was trying to win a penalty here. And we'll have a look at the situation. He's getting pushed back. The ball comes out, and I believe that uh, Paul Osmond might have been trying to win a penalty and uh, really came unstuck. Well, no, I, I'll give him the, the benefit of the doubt the other way. I think he was trying to offload the ball and the, the tackle wasn't completed. I didn't expect you to agree with 
Either way, it's a, a pretty tough uh, decision because it's right in front of the posts. Osmond couldn't believe it. Former St George front row who's filled in well here with the Raiders this season after they lost the likes of Brent Todd. Michael O'Connor coming away from the wing and telling the players just what he requires. He may have got the message from the sideline. Uh, Ridge. He's an around the corner style of kicker, but the ball is placed at 45 degrees. And he chips it through. He could have kicked it out of the ground if he'd really hit it. So the boot of Ridge proving very useful since he's come on and Manly lead by 14 points to eight. We've got seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. It's a strange placement of the ball. But he's uh, inverting it more. Time in possession. Still Canberra having the ball for longer. Seven minutes more. 19 versus 12 minutes. But I suppose after the early dominance of Canberra in possession, it's been about even since that point. Here's Ridge now bringing it back. That's a great kick off uh, by the Canberra Raiders. They've locked Manly well inside their 22. Jones. Both these teams on 16 points. Canberra with eight wins and eight losses, but Manly seven wins, seven losses, and two draws through the season. And earlier we were talking about the attacking record of Canberra, which despite their precarious position on the ladder, they're the second best attacking side in the competition, but they've been very expensive in defence. They're only the 12th best in defence, so it tells the story. They can still attack, but they've been a bit loose in defence through the year. Brett Mullins, great evasion there, using the fend to push off, assisting his pace and step. McDonald. Meninga loses the ball. It went backwards. Fern has got it. The referee, yes, willing that that ball went backwards. Mel tried to unload it, was confronted by a tackle at the same time. But that was Mel's seventh hit up of the match. Last tackle for the Raiders. They go to the blind side, confusion, and Walters decides he'll do what Ricky Stewart would have done, which is find touch. Yes, a good ploy to be able to have a kicker based at the dummy half and Steve Wallace this occasion was left no alternative but to put the kick in. A very good season Steve Walters. He's got better as the season has gone on. David Hosking is out of this match injured. Was originally named as a fresh reserve. Haslow loses his footing. Lyons from dummy half, where he played the middle part of the season. O'Donnell, driven by Ferner. Bella, with his best run of the game. Oh, and a great run too by Marty Bella. Still going. They cannot knock him over. Like a bulldozer. Ridge. Some good pace from Ridge, but that's a great tackle by David Ferner. I'm just wondering if there's been a positional change, Brett, while Mullins is now out on the right flank. Field goal attempt by O'Connor from 40 metres with the wind. And he'll give possession to Canberra on the 22. Well, they had the Canberra Raiders spread there, but I thought that Michael O'Connor was a little bit ambitious. You see Michael O'Connor going in there. It's on the last tackle. Nothing lost. And uh, the ball almost hitting the pace. Fritz from the tap. Well, that's good defence once more by Manley. Three of them in there. Roberts, Mestrov and Jones. Coyne turns it inside to Meninga. And that's the third occasion we've seen Gary Coyne turn that ball back inside. So it's trying to shut down the markers uh, jumping too early. There's the total tackles. Manly with 86 compared to Canberra 61, but uh, Manly are now controlling possession a lot better. Well, there was a dump to Matthew Wood. Lions slamming him to ground. Croker. Jason Croker 
played uh, several matches in the centres for Canberra early in the season, but now he's made a mistake as he tried to play the ball quickly. The referee said he fumbled it. Well, a howl goes up from the Canberra crowd, but uh, believing that that ball was interfered with, and that's a pretty tough decision. Uh, how can you get up and play the ball correctly if you've got someone riding on your back? Well, I agree with you, but last week we saw some penalties where Croker would have been penalised under the new direction to the referees to enforce the fact that a man's got to get to his feet and play the ball. Well, he did, I agree he... with you, but it's more important, or should be <laughs> cracked down on more if a man doesn't get away from him and allow him to play it. Well, poetic justice as uh, Ricky Stewart comes up with the ball off Johnny, Johnny Jones. And there's the sort of penalty Ricky Stewart didn't get to his feet before he healed that back. Osman, the Canberra crowd suddenly come alive, trying to lift their team. Just two minutes till the halftime siren. Wood goes wide. Williams is beaten by Gale. I'm a bit surprised that Canberra haven't played that left side a little bit more often. They've stepped around Williams. Williams' uh, lateral defence is a little bit suspect at the moment. It still makes me wonder why Graham Lowe brought Matthew Ridge into the game late because it seems that he was compromised by having to play Williams and that's put O'Connor on the wing. Here's Meninga. Ridge takes it well and shows a bit of courage to stand his ground with the awesome side of Mel Meninga coming at him. It was like a Mack truck zooming <laughs> down on you. <laughs> he went under the wheels. <laughs> so Manly will just be content, I would think, to play our time here. A set of six will take it through till the break. Mestrov. And Hasler, who is all over the field at the moment, running for dummy half. Good low tackle by Ferner. Lyons kicking on the last tackle. And finds touch. So there might be one last throw for Canberra if they can win this scrum. Well, the Manly Pack, not all that uh, in a hurry to get to the form the scrum. And the same with the Canberra. I'm surprised, really, that Canberra haven't hurried to, to form the scrum because they could probably get a, a set of six in. What do you think, John? They, they look like they're coming home from a war, the lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think either of them are interested. <laughs> you know, a war or the cows just wandering home up through the back paddock. They were pretty slow to get to that scrum maybe they've had enough of the cold and the wind here's wood there's 27 seconds to go in the first half everyone's going to sleep slow play the ball upset the rhythm gary coin ended up with it long ball to meninga Tuvi, he takes Boy. him off oh, uh, what a super what a mighty mighty tackle that was from the the ant compared to the gargantuan Mel Meninga. The siren goes, Lions happy to lie down in the tackle. And Canberra, who started the game on fire with penalty, scored the first try. Manley came back with two tries and got on top. And at halftime, Manley in front, 14 points to eight. From the nation's capital, Canberra, you are watching round 17 of the Premiership Race, coming to you live from Bruce Stadium here on ABC Sport. Tomorrow, Cairns in far north Queensland sees the continuation of the region's shield competition, with Cairns South playing Mount Isa at Atherton. Wouldn't we all love to be in the tropical north today because it's pretty chilly here at Bruce Stadium. The Shield competition used to be known as the Foley Shield. It stretches from Mackay to Cairns across to Mount Isa and Townsville leading the competition at the present time and these games having a vital bearing on that ladder. Cairns South take on Mount Isa and Cairns North versus Ingham tomorrow. Well, everyone's asking me who's going to win the grand final. It seems like a premature question when you've still got 11 teams in the running, but they are starting to sort themselves out and last night Balmain's lifeline broke. But before last night's game, the ladder looked like this. A top group of six teams Brisbane, three points clear of Illawarra, St George and Penrith equal third, and Newcastle and Wests equal fifth. Then a gap of three points to a group of five teams on 16 points. Balmain, Norths, Manly, Canberra and Easts. Last weekend, four of those five lost, 
and all are on the brink of extinction for 92. At Belmore, North Sydney's Les Kiss picked up a hat-trick of tries as the Bears led Canterbury 20-6 after 30 minutes. But Canterbury had nothing to lose and threw the ball around in breezy fashion. Troy Cassell and Terry Lamb ran riot in an entertaining match which featured a 10-try scoring spree. A remarkable and disputed Paul Doolan try levelled the scores before Canterbury went on to dent North semi-final hopes 36-28. The Steel City teams, Illawarra and Newcastle, held each other to one try apiece at Wollongong, John Schuster scoring all the Knights' points for the third week in a row. The injection of Neil Pincinelli and Bill Dunn at half-time added creative spark to the Illawarra pack and finally cracked the Knights' defence. McIndoe was sin-binned with Illawarra leading 8-6, but Schuster missed the penalty goal and the Steelers hung on to win. A spare parts Sharks outfit came out full of fire at Cronulla to lead Brisbane 16-6 midway through the first half. Both teams enjoyed freakish bounces, Langer and Kevin Walters taking advantage as the Broncos scrambled to a 2016 victory, Brisbane glad the rep season is now behind them. It took a storming run from John Jones to lift an unconvincing manly side to victory over the Gold Coast, 16-2 at Tweed Heads. At the football stadium, Souths were a mixed bag of good and bad, while Parramatta started badly and in the second half got worse. The Rabbitohs led 20-0 after 17 minutes. Jim Sedaris, Rod Mabon and new winger Greg Keenan playing well as Souths eventually rolled the Eels 28-16. There was an emotional encounter at Penrith where only 14 of last year's two grand final lineups were on deck for the rematch. The Panthers hit the front 10-8 early in the second half through Cole Bentley. The replay doesn't confirm whether Bentley was short or got the ball to the line. Three minutes from the end, Steve Walters looked to have pulled the game out of the fire. It's still on to Freddy! Yes! Now he's got them for a forward pass! I've looked at the replay over and over and I'm still not sure. It's a bad angle to judge. From the replay, I'd give the benefit of the doubt to the attackers Canberra, but referee Eddie Ward was in a much better position to judge. You could hardly criticise him for a split-second, millimetre, either-way decision. Well, we always hear the opinions of the administrators, club officials and the media, but less often the blokes on the field. Well, Rugby League Week has conducted its annual poll of 100 players from the 16 clubs. The votes for the top players in each position agreed with the Australian selectors, with one exception. The number one fullback voted was Gary Jack, just ahead of Mick Potter, Andrew Eddinghausen and Willie Kahn. The rest were clear-cut choices. Best winger, Michael Hancock, centre, Mal Meninga, 5'8", Laurie Daly, half, Alan Langer, lock, Brad Clyde, second row, Bob Lindner, prop, Glenn Lazarus, narrowly from Paul Harrigan, and hooker, Steve Walters. Phil Gould got the vote as best coach. The standard of the New South Wales Rugby League administration was considered adequate. The judiciary, adequate to poor. Refereeing, adequate to poor. But the best referee was considered to be Bill Harrigan. There's too much information to go into here, but on rules, there was a strong vote, 66%, against the stealing the ball rule. And a strong vote, 62%, against the enforcing of halfbacks feeding the ball into the middle of the scrum, as is proposed for next season. Last night, round 17 kicked off. Canterbury led Balmain 6-4 at halftime, but the Bulldogs destroyed the Tigers in the second half. Three tries to Jason Williams. Canterbury fans would have to be very happy with what they're seeing tonight. Lamb kicks for the outside man. Williams! Does he get it down? 30 points to 10. Terry Lamb, the spearhead. What a tremendous clubman Barbar is. And that finishes Balmain for this season and leaves Canterbury clinging to a slim hope of making the semi-finals. Well, time to dig into the time capsule. And again this week, we're going back to the Australia-New Zealand series of 1978. 
The Aussies won the first two tests and had the series wrapped up, returning to Sydney for the final match. Could the Kiwis salvage something out of the third test? Steve Rebilliard has the story. The Australian lineup was considerably changed from the second test with Tom Radonikas coming in at halfback, Greg Pearce into the second row and an entirely new front row in Craig Young, Max Krilich and Rod Morris. The notable change to the New Zealand 13 was the inclusion of a man known to North's fans, Fred R. Coy, on the wing. The Kiwis began with much more purpose than in the first two tests and fullback Bruce Jordan put them 2-0 up after five minutes. Here's a rule rarely enforced in the 90s. New Zealand players offside at the dropout and a gift two points to Mick Cronin. Right in front of the post. So it's Mick Cronin attempting the penalty for Australia and that levels the scores at two all. The revamped Australian pack was playing with little cohesion and when the bomb went up, Jordan emerged with a three-pointer. Good and high, coming down on the Australian line, it's anybody's ball, Jordan! And Jordan has scored for New Zealand! A try for New Zealand, the first of the match, and New Zealand leads by five points to four. An expressionless Frank Stanton must have been feeling slightly ill when Jordan converted his own try. And he's kicked it, and it's seven points to four in favour of New Zealand. Australia's best play of the half came right on the siren. Mick Cronin's centering kick was a good one, but Bobby Fulton had been pulled down in back play, and Cronin went on to kick his fifth penalty of the half. Australia went to the break leading 10-7. And a penalty, yes a penalty, Fulton was tripped. New Zealand began the second half as they did the first. Mark Graham a brilliant offload to O'Hara and they were back in front 12-10. And uh, New Zealand's over. It's a try, a try for New Zealand, scored by the winger O'Hara. O'Hara in for New Zealand and it's 10 all. A good try to New Zealand there and again they've kept, kept it a full march to them for being able to come back here. Now there's some Four Australian defence here on that blind side, and Graham does very well, gets through it. That one-handed right-hand pass, O'Hara picks it up, and he's in. That's a good New Zealand try. The New Zealand fullback attempting the conversion, which could put New Zealand in front, and he's kicked it. How long, though, could New Zealand maintain their new intensity in defence? Only a brilliant covering tackle stopped a runaway Neville Glover. Cover defence coming across is Jordan in a great tackle, taking the winger over the touchline, close to halfway. Finally, Rod Reddy pierced the New Zealand front line and skipper Bob Fulton was at his shoulder. He's found a gap. Into New Zealand's half, he's got support. That's Fulton, and Fulton on his way to the line. Arcoy is giving chase, but Fulton will score. Fulton's over, underneath the black dot for an Australian try, and it's 14 to 13 in favour of New Zealand. Two tackles after the kickoff following Fulton's try, Radonikus, Pierce and Bostead produced what seemed so easy in the second test, but had taken 60 minutes to find in the third. Him. It's going to be another Australian try. Bostead scores. Arcoy uh, in a great chase there, but Bostead scores and increases the lead to 18-14. A few minutes later, Greg Pierce waltzed through a yawning gap in a sleepy defence, and Australia had the test in safe keeping. And Pierce has found the gap again, and that's Dorothy, and Dorothy's going to score. It's another Australian try. 23 points to 16. The Kiwis had run out of puff. Smart work from Bostead, Rogers and Price led to a try that Greg Pierce certainly deserved. It went through Rogers, but it was an off-back. This is Bostead. Caught by O'Hara, but he got it inside. Now it's Rogers again. Price back in the attack after being injured, and he's got support, and that's a try by Pierce. Pierce over for Australia to increase the lead, 28 points to 16. Straight from the next kickoff, the New Zealand defence was again exposed. Hooker Max Krilich bobbing up between Rogers and Fulton. Backing at this time, and that's down to Rogers, and Rogers almost right through. That's Krilich backing up, and he's got support inside. It's Fulton, and Fulton will score. Graham won't catch him. That's a try by Fulton. A try from the kickoff by Australia, and it's 33 points to 16. The end couldn't come soon enough for the tourists after they'd started the game so well. 33-16 it stayed and a 3-0 series win for Australia. Australia beating New Zealand in 1978, a great Australian side with Bobby Fulton uh, playing so well as always and a Kerry Bostead who learnt to sidestep around the cow pats up there in North Queensland. Well apparently so, they used to do that up there in Queensland I used to uh, practice stepping around uh, burrs. <laughs> At Roma. At Roma. <laughs> the big burrs and bindi eyes are Roma. All right, let's have a look at the stats here at halftime at Bruce Stadium. Manly in charge on the scoreboard, 14 to 8. The scrums have gone to Manly 7-3, no tied heads. The penalties 6-3 to Canberra. Overall errors, 
Quite a few missed tackles by Manley. 16 missed tackles in all. And the handling by both teams, considering the wind, pretty good. Manley getting through a lot of defence. 106 tackles to Canberra's 69. Metres gained. Canberra 874 to Manley 769. Manly certainly surging as the half went on and in possession, time in possession, 23 minutes versus 16. So Canberra having the better of it there. So you would think that uh, Canberra with those sort of statistics running into the wind might have uh, been level on the scoreboard with those two tries by Manly getting him in front. Well, coach Tim Sheens would be very happy with his lot. They're going into the second half with a gale at their back and uh, Ricky Stewart sort of terrorised Manly, didn't he? Uh, virtually in that half against the breeze. So as I said before, it mind boggles what he's going to do with the breeze at his back. But uh, by the same token, they are behind. And uh, they did have the luxury of a, a number of penalties early in that first half. But Manly have settled down to a, a more settled pattern. They seem to be uh, coping with things a little bit better. But a lot of pressure is going to be on Matthew Ridge and his wingers this half. Because uh, they're going to be running that ball out of their quarter quite a deal this, this second half. Manly certainly seemed to settle down as the half went on and they were playing some pretty good good sets of six as it went along but their two tries, the O'Connor to Hancock try and the Tuvi try from the scrum both, I guess you could say surprise tries. Well they certainly were, it was a great try, individual try by Tuvi and also the uh, try by Hancock came out of a great break by Michael O'Connor. Referee checks with Manly to make sure they're ready. And Meninga with the breeze at his back delicately chips down to the goal line and had almost spun Matthew Ridge around. Jones brings it back. Matthew Wood with a tackle. O'Donnell with a good run up the blind, close to the touchline. Interesting to see whether Canberra decide to kick early in the tackle count when they do get possession. I'm just having a look at the changes here. We have Daryl McDonald playing fullback, so Brett. Mullins has gone into the centres. Oh, actually, he's playing left wing. O'Donnell goes to the blind side with Ridge, who didn't have much angle. McDonald takes it well. Maybe Johnny uh, Peard can shed some light on the changes in that Canberra side. Yeah, Mullins to the left wing, and of course, uh, Darrell McDonald fullback. But uh, Manly looking for quicker play of the balls and a better chasing game because they won't have the advantage of that wind in the second half. Tim Sheen's uh, pretty comfortable at the moment because he thinks the kicking game with Ricky Stewart. Good chase game and some enthusiasm will get them these uh, vitally needed two points. And Stewart kicks over the head of O'Connor who races back towards his corner. A good chase from Canberra. Broker, though, hasn't got the speed to go with O'Connor. But then Gale was looming up on the outside and O'Connor stopped. Thought he might have had more chance to go up the middle, but he couldn't get his step in. Well, it's going to be a tough 40 minutes for Manly as they battle against his breeze by just having a look. And Jeff Toobie's taken three rucks to get back on side. So obviously they're just going to keep it tight, play out their sets of sixes. Mestrov. We see the top defensive players, David Ferner leading the way for Canberra, with Tim closely followed by Paul Osborne, and over in the other corner, Manley leading, Tony Mestroff leading the way. He does uh, that very well for Manley. Osborne swings Ridge to ground on the last tackle. The Lions makes a mistake. Cliff Lyons, Brain was thinking too quickly for his hands. He might have had uh, in, been in two minds whether to kick or to run it. Yeah, this is an early break for the Canberra side, but that ball there just sort of floating and uh, Cliff Lyons just making a mistake of it. And here go the Raiders with Croker almost through the tackle. Lyons and Williams get hold of him. McDonald puts his head down. Very close, McDonald. Mullins a dummy half. McDonald being held down, close to a penalty. And then Cliff Lyons dives through. Referee gives the penalty to Canberra. Stewart throws it out to Ferner. Plenty of men out wide if they want to use them. Canberra, Ricky Stewart in there, shouting instructions. He calls Osmond to take it up. He pops it to Meninga. Back to Walters. Steve Walters. 
Tackled by Mestrov. On the blind side, it's Fritz. Solid tackle came in. Looked a little high. Mestrov and Lyons, two of them in in the tackle. Long ball from Stewart to Gale. To Croker. Gale wrapping around him, couldn't get it back. Now it's Gale a dummy half. Goes himself. Stewart was wrapping around to the blind side. He wanted the ball. Now it's the fifth. Coin. Stewart has Osman inside. Looking for Meninga outside. It goes to Croker. On the ground is a play on to try in the far corner. <laughs> Hoppy has finished it off. Sean Hoppy. A little bit of luck for Canberra as the ball went on the ground. But they knew where they wanted to get it. The manly defence almost frustrated them. But the good hands of Sean Hoppy picking up the loose ball. They worked it wide from Stewart. Meninga seemed to be knocked by Tooby there. He was impeded. Croker picked it up brilliantly. Whether the pass was forward, then Hoppy picked up the bouncing ball to finish it off. Scrambling play, but the try scored by Canberra. Yeah, uh, Canberra gambled. They gambled not taking the uh, kick. They went along with the uh, taking the tap. And we see that ball just being thrown out there. A couple of suspect passes there, but uh, a little bit of luck. And Hoppy comes back to put that ball about five metres inside the touchline. He said once again, that ball by Ricky Stewart looked like it could have faded forward too, but uh, the ball bouncing up for Hoppy. Oh, no. Sean Hoppy, sixth try of the year. The New Zealander, who had a big year last year, scored 24 tries last year with the North Coast Club. David Ferner, just a few metres in from touch. A difficult one, but at least he's got the wind helping him this time. Should straighten it up, but he's allowed a little too much. And Canberra bridge that gap. Just two points in it now. It's Manly 14, Canberra 12. We've had five minutes of the second half. Yeah, there's weight of possession. Ricky Stewart starting to slide across. Phil Tuvi went out of the line. O'Connor just came in there. She probably should have stayed out, but a little bit of luck. I'll agree with Arthur there. Hoppy was able to pick up that loose ball. Go for a much needed try, but weight of possession counting against Manly. Couple of passes there, probably just flat enough to get the referees not getting close to going forward. Well, they took the punt, John, and they ran it on the last tackle, but then again, just goes to show you, you can't make mistakes in your own territory, and uh, they paid the penalty for yeah, well, Clippy Lines coughing up that ball. Canberra made one early when uh, Wallers dropped it in the play. The ball on Manly scored. And, of course, the same thing was done then. But I would have gone for the tap, Arthur, I think, down that end. And with Ricky Stewart being able to put that ball in the end goal, they would have put a lot of pressure on Manly. And here's a towering kick by Stewart. And Bridge has to bring this ball back. I thought you might say that, John. <laughs> so, Ridge brings it back. Manly inside their own 22. Canberra defence working hard, trying to keep Manly there, but Jones has other ideas. Yeah, good run by Johnny Jones. He's been uh, the forward leader for most of the season for the Manly side. Lyons has kicked, floating out towards the touchline, and he shows that... Well, maybe it wasn't just the ability of Ricky Stewart. Maybe that wind is carrying out towards that touch line and assisting the kick. Well, that's the way the wind is blowing. And, of course, Cliff Lyons taking a tip from Ricky Stewart. Just uh, doing a copycat there. Three, three. Thanks, Mike. Scrum packing, 25 metres out from the Canberra line. And Stewart's got it. Hoppy in from the wing. Gary Coyne, come bump off Ian Roberts. Fritz, he's a big man. I mentioned Paul Osborn, who's come to the fore this season, but so too is Darren Fritz, with Brent Todd leaving and Glenn Lazarus going to Brisbane. McDonald now, good pass back to Meninga. Stewart, Gale was about to change direction. 
They're very dangerous. Both these sides are very dangerous if you let them all flow. Meninga, short ball for Stewart. And the kick by Ricky Stewart eventually finds touch. Tantalising there for Matthew Ridge as he went back. Sometimes I wonder whether he'd be just as happy to set the scrum and let all his forwards get back onside. Well, this is the easy way of gaining yards. And uh, you see they just popped down the touchline there, gaining 30 metres. metres. Tuvi darting out from the scrum base, but the referee says he'll have it back in once more. And a clean heel, almost a perfect scrum, that one. Cliff Lyons has it. Hasler. Well, that what ball wasn't played. No, Hasler just dropping that ball out the back there and uh, mainly making too many unforced errors. And we'll have a look at the tackle being made by Fern. Oh, well, there's that ball. Should have been a penalty. Gary Coyne pushed that ball out. So it's amazing what the replay shows up. Yep. Yes, I didn't see it with the naked eye. And the replay showed all. So Canberra very lucky to be in possession. Roberts tries to rake it back. He concedes a penalty. So if the previous decision by the referee cost, uh, cost Manley, well, that one has really gone against them. Roberts trying to rake it back. Well, what he's ruled there is that the hand was over on the Canberra player, but... Had the hand not touched the, uh, the tackle player, that would have been play on because the ball had been placed on the deck. Arthur, I didn't think he was square. He was to the side of the, the ball player. Was it possible to have a look at that? <laughs> I also was wondering whether he did uh, rate for it before the ball was on the ground, but either way, the referees picked him for one of those facets of the play, the ball. But really, just going back to the previous one where Des Hasler had the ball knocked by Gary Coyne. That was the reason that uh, it all came about a moment later. And I state one of the one of the reasons why they failed to pick it up is that they're too far away from the ruck area, the referees. Two from four for Ferner. This is right in front. He could hardly miss because he's got the wind right behind him. But he makes no mistake. Continuing his good season, David Ferner. It's 14 points all now. And we've got 30 minutes of play to go. And here's this incident here as we see being up and uh, there's no doubt that he was to the side. You're spot on again, John Peard. He's an eagle eye, Peardy, isn't he? <laughs> and I was wrong. The ball was certainly on the ground before Robert struck. And the Raiders getting behind their side. At Bruce Stadium here, it's very much a Canberra crowd and very few Manly supporters. And when the Raiders are on fire, there's plenty to cheer about. And when the opposition is scoring points, it can be deadly silent. That's Mal Meninga's uh, 11th hit up for the match. Big effort for a oh. back coming into the forwards. Steve Walters, always a threat. Hoppy. Manly knowing they're going to have to work very hard in this half. Now the Canberra back on level terms. They're offloading passes as it came back from Coyne. Walters, Coyne again. Stewart, Meninga, Osborne. The tackle was fine. There was nothing wrong with it despite the crowd's roar. And the referee says so. They can do all they like. Referee McCallum says the tackle was fair. Gale. Ridge surrounded by a posse of Raiders. Oh, they swarm all over him. Four of them there to make the tackle. Great chase. They're certainly on a high at the moment, the Canberra Raiders, as Hancock skirts that ball sideways. Grieve. O'Donnell. The flicks was offside, never marked up. O'Donnell, I thought he was going to play it forward, but healed it back, and Lyons with the kick. Darrell McDonald, back there. Hoppy. Interesting decision by Tim Seams to put Darrell McDonald back there in the second half, no doubt. 
in the first half he thought that Manly would be kicking a lot more with the wind and Mullins the speech to, to return the kicks but in this half with Sheen's putting Mullins out on the wing maybe he thinks that Brett Mullins could chase the kicks a little better than Daryl McDonald. here's Gary Coyne and almost slipping through there selling a dummy to Martin Bella Stewart Gale Wood Croker good step good change of direction from Croker and a tough ask for Martin Bella Osmond to the blind side they're within 10 meters now plays it forward it's the last tackle he goes himself it's a handover yeah, big uh, Paul Osmond there forgot that it was the last tackle. His urgency to get up and play the ball, he didn't keep the count. Now a good run from Hancock. Manly spending a lot of time down around their own 22. Mestrov got a shoulder charge from Froger, bumped him into Fritz. Greve. Better running by Greve, but he does need support. They're going up one out at the moment. None of the inside backs of Manly are giving support at all. And Meninga started that big tackle and then was helped out. Roberts. Again, it's one out. And, just and Gale makes the tackle. Just having a look to see where uh, McDonald is. John, do you think they'll kick the ball that far to McDonald? Uh, I think he'll he like himself coming onto this ball quickly. <laughs> Hoppy well positioned. And he tries to take on O'Connor. McDonald picks it up. That was a risky play by Hoppy on the wing to attempt the pass. Hoppy again. Darrell Williams screaming for help on the far side, on this side of the field. And Canberra swing it wide. They can see a few holes inside of Meninga. The intensity of the match has uh, seemed to picked up, John. Both uh, sides seem to sense that the game is in the balance. <coughs> Yes, so is their season, Arthur. They've got 40 minutes to do their best. Right. One's going to live and one's going to die after today, but there's a knock-on by Fritz. Trying to come onto the ball. May have taken his eyes off it. And this gives Manly much-needed possession. Canberra have had quite a bit this half. 14 points all with 25 minutes to go. And Tuvi's off again. Scored a try from the scrum base in the first half when he went straight through. And once again, we see David Ferner a little bit slow to disengage himself from the scrum. John Jones. These two teams striving to get the upper hand. Panic could set in in the last 10 minutes for the team that's behind. Tuvi. Weaving back outside. It's a Shepard. Referee says play on. No, no obstruction. There was no attack uh, obstructed in that situation. But still should have given the ball. Lyons. Bella. Tries to get away from Woods. They wrestle him. Ten metres out. Manly. The first time they've been down Canberra's 22 this half. Lyons. Holding the pass up for Jones. It was a little slow coming to him. The move wasn't put on as sweetly as they would have liked. It's the fifth tackle. O'Donnell. It's the last tackle. He's got to get rid of it. Lyons sweeps it out the back. Tuvi loses it back. It was touched by a Canberra head, was it? No. Referee says it's still the last tackle. He never waved six more, but it, uh, there was a suspicion of a, uh, a hand they... in there by Canberra. Yeah, there was a touch. Well, as Brett Mullins was charging through on Tuvi. Time in possession. Canberra, well, with 12 minutes more of the ball, and with that much ball, they should be winning this game, not just on level terms. Gale gets past Lyons, but not the covering tackle of Jones. Quick play the ball. Ferner swerving in and out. Didn't quite get his rhythm there. Poppy. We'll have a look at the uh, extra tackles that Manly have had to do there compared to Canberra, and uh, that's indicative of the uh, possession that Canberra didn't do. It. Canberra throwing the ball around. You would think that the tactics might have been to just take it up the middle for a few and then let Stewart hoof it downfield, but they are prepared to throw it around even in their own half. And now it's Ricky Stewart. It's kick, it spins along the touchline and goes touch in goal. 
That was so close to uh, being the perfect kick. 14 points all. And this is developing into a thriller. We see Ricky Stewart popped himself out from the dummy half area. Low trajectory kick, but the ball straightening up once it gets to the corner post. Stewart in behind the defensive line, shouting instructions to his forwards. He's just about five metres behind the front line of defence. Bella. And the referee waves six more as Steve Walters has a chop in the play of the ball. Greve. Good ball back to Hancock. Element of risk, but it came off for him, did it well. Brett Hetherington on the sideline, ready, ready to come into the game. Lyons goes wide to Ridge. Bit of room for him. O'Connor now. Still going as O'Connor. Surely Michael O'Connor's got to be brought into the action somewhere closer to the centre of the field rather than having to wait on the wing for the opportunity. The kick is a good one. The kicks in this game have been a high standard from the teams kicking into the wind. Yeah, good work by the Manly side. They're controlling their possession as well now and uh, just to let them go down that left-hand touch line once again. Osborne off and Brett Hetherington on. Paul Osborne has made 15 tackles, second highest for Canberra. Good effort. Nice time for replacement too. Looking for a little bit more mobility. You'll get that with Hetherington. And Canberra attack only 10 metres out from their own line again with McDonald. Hetherington, first touch of the ball. Originally named in the starting lineup. Walters. Gale, Meninga, Wood. Short blind side and they use it well. Oh, tremendous work by Kirby. He's read that play so well and uh, forced Quaker into touch. Showed him the sideline and had the pace to cover. You see the ball being shifted across here to Wood. And actually it was Wood who... Uh, Another replacement warming up for Canberra. Michael Maguire, 16. It was a strange decision by Canberra. I thought they would have rather put uh, the ball on the foot then. They tried to go down the short side. It was uh, Tuvi that read it very well. And Manley now. 30 metres out. Tuvi goes wide. Lyons tries to get away from Stewart. Both teams prepared to move this ball around despite the windy conditions, which make passing that much more difficult. Admittedly, both teams have concentrated on the short passing game. Ridge puts a little kick through. Fritz is back there. It was the last tackle. But Fritz has saved it. You're Useful kick. Yeah, certainly great work by Ridge. Uh, there was nothing on and uh, elected to go down to the short side behind the marker area. Just put the little grubber in and he gave good chase and was left up to Fritz to salvage the situation there. Scott Gale getting a rest. Stewart drops out. What distance can he get? Well, only just over the halfway line. And Ridge makes good ground back upfield. They're the top tacklers for both sides. Darren Fritz leading the way with 16. Closely followed by Paul Osmond, who was just replaced. But Ian Roberts leading the way. Closely followed by Mestroff from Manly. Manly are only 15 metres out now. Bella takes them on. 10 metres now. The score, 14 points all. Ridge with the shot at field goal. The one-pointer is his. Manly hit the front. 15-14. 18 minutes remaining in the match. Cool and calm. The Kiwi fullback Ridge pops the one-pointer. Will it be enough? Well, it was all pretty simple. They set up for that easy one-pointer, but uh, they've got a lot of time ahead of them, and uh, no doubt they've got to make a little bit of real estate control position to try and get that ball away from their own post. Here it is, Ridge right in centre field. Canberra not really awake to the field goal. Not much pressure on him. Let's say they've worked on the field goal during the week. 
anticipating this would be a close game, fighting for their lives. A good protection from Jones and another couple of forwards, uh, including Roberts. But, John, I go back to your point. If I was Canberra, I'd be playing it down the other end of the field. Yeah, I thought Ricky Stewart went through his mind. He got the ball in his hand rather slowly and let it go to Meninga, but I thought, he probably thought too, that I should put the foot on this one. He shaped for the kick, didn't he, John? Yep, and I think he uh, regretted doing it because Manly, you know, a little bit of possession on their side now, putting a bit of pressure on. They've got a lot of better control in their game. Lions' kick to McDonald. So now Canberra are the team who have to make the running in this game. The wind, of course, is the big factor at their backs, but down by a point, they have to control the football, realise they can play it at the other end of the field and not start to do anything too silly because they're playing for survival. Both teams are, and it's well as the halfway. Well, it's not unusual for a Warren to be behind. They've come behind on a few games, including last week, didn't get the points, but did so against South Sydney. Good work by Fritz. And Williams is in trouble, coming away from that tackle. Ferner, up the middle he goes. Will Ricky Stewart think about a field goal reply? He has to go into dummy half. There was no one there. Throws it wide. Croker, big ball to Meninga. Meninga over the 22. He wanted his support player to go inside, but McGuire yeah. didn't take the angle. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised at uh, Beck on that occasion. He, uh, Michael Beck, he should have, Michael McGuire rather, that he should have came back inside and he didn't elect. Here we see Big Mel trying to show him where the hole is, but uh, Hancock showed McGuire the line and he was easy meet, really. It just shows what a tight game this is because that chance for Canberra only came because Ricky Stewart was forced to go into dummy half. There was no one else there and then he decided to uh, throw the long pass. He was standing on the blind side originally. Tony Iro into the action as Hasler bursts upfield. Good run, good pass to O'Donnell. Replacing Darrell Williams, Warren. Darrell Williams in trouble with a hand injury. Injured in a tackle a few moments back. The last tackle, Ridge on the halfway. Awkward bouncing ball for McDonald. Fine kick by Ridge. He really went through the eye of the needle with that one. Well, it's a tremendous kick by Ridge, and since he's come onto the paddock, Manly have been a different side. But he's controlled their kicking game. Just have a look at this for a great kick into the breeze. And a, some of the uh, Manly trainers and players are asking me to send a quick cheerio to David Miles, who's in the Royal North Shore Spinal Unit. Get well from David Hosking, the mule, Malcolm, one of the trainers. All their best wishes. And now Canberra attack. Darrell McDonald throws a pass on the outside. Maguire tackled brilliantly. Great tackle by Hasler. McDonald inside to Maguire again. So Manly have let Canberra get away from their own goal line. Stewart, coin. Ferner straightens it up. Throws it out the back. He wasn't looking, he was hoping. Stewart on the ground. He's managed to get it back. Canberra living dangerously here as it comes to Croker. They're taking risks. So far they're retaining the ball. It's a fifth tackle. I think you'll get a shot at here. Here it is. Ricky Stewart puts the bomb up high. Centre field bomb. Underneath it is Ridge. Through they come. Mullins racing through on him. Great take. That's fantastic courage from Ridge. Oh, certainly a great take. And uh, the big figure once again of Darren Fritz looming down upon Matthew Ridge. But held it well. Manly leading, 15-14. O'Donnell throws it over the touchline. Early in the tackle count. Yeah. O'Donnell trying a little too hard to find his winger. Yeah, going down the short side, made the right decision, but should have given it on the first occasion. Threw the dummy, went into the tackle, took the tackle, but by that time, Michael O'Connor had overrun him. O'Connor on the wing as that ball was thrown, but he's back in the centres for the scrum. 
McDonald. And he's been a problem in the area for Manly. They've uh, busted a number of occasions out in the centre. Kronka with a great run. At 25 metres out, Stewart changes of direction to Woods, to Meninga. Mullins. Mullins running well. Cuts through, beating tackles, swerving. Tremendous stuff from Brett Mullins. Coyne holds a pass up for Ferner. Only five metres out. Walters now borrowing. Fifth tackle. Ferner a dummy half to Stewart. Wood goes wide. Fritz tries to stay alive in the tackle. Out the back. It's on the last. And Manley have got it. Martin Bella has found the ball in well, his arms. a strange decision. The referee rolled six more and then Martin Bella fell on the ball. So I'm just wondering what happened there. Bella had to be offside. Tony Iro. And Manly weathering that storm. And what a storm it was from Canberra. Throwing everything at them. Now the referee is pinged David O'Donnell for uh, dropping the ball in the play. The ball to concede a scrum. It is O'Donnell trying to play the ball quickly. Well, once again, we see Ricky Stewart forcing the tackle player down. So how in the hell can he get up and play the ball correctly? The referee is saying that O'Donnell lost possession rather than played the ball illegally. Here's Meninga getting it back to Walters. Canberra with another chance. Numbers out wide. Hoppy breaks the tackle of Hasler, but a tremendous hit from Tony Iroh stops him. That was a tackle that had to be made. Iroh playing on the wing since coming on. Mullins twisting out of tackles. To the Manly 22. Will they run it or set up the field goal to draw the game level once more? Walters. Stewart. Wood. Out it comes to Croker. Taken by Tooby. Matthew Wood playing 5-8 now that Scott Dale's off the field. It comes on the last to Stewart. He bombs away, but it could be too deep. Coming down close to the dead ball line, and Ridge takes it on the full before he ran out of play. And that means it's a 22 tap. John Bell, an old, uh, uh, well, an ex-rugby union player, you would have thought that Ricky Stewart would have thought about tying the game up first <laughs> instead of going for the bomb. Well, again, I thought it went through his mind. I thought he was setting himself, but then they're down this end of the field. I think they desperately want to win. Well, Graham Lowe. Well, it's all or nothing. It is. It's all or nothing, absolutely. And I suppose it could be going through both teams' mind that one point isn't going to be enough. They're on 16 points. One point takes them up to 17. If they could win all remaining five matches, they would only get 27. They'd be in the same position as Canterbury. Maybe they're going for break, realising or thinking that 28 is the mark they're going to need. Oh, good they need to win that draw. There's four rucks, and Manley's over the halfway line. David Hosking loping down the sideline. Canberra have got it, 25 out from their own line. Hoppy tackle. I think Canberra have got time for two field goals with this win. I think I'd be thinking along those lines. Let's get one to level the scores and then come yeah. back for another one. I believe that's where they make the mistakes. Oh, got, they're going to have field position for the rest of the eight minutes. So if they can draw it. Stewart kicks deep and high to Ridge. He well, he held up it. The ball bounces away from him. Looked as if he had it covered to take it on the full and that means he's trapped on his own 22 rather than getting outside it. Stewart did kick high to give his chasers time to get yeah. through on it. I think Marty nearly popped the ball up. Roll away, roll away. Hold on. <coughs> Mess roll. Roberts. Charges forward with the defence. Three of them throw themselves at him. 
Hasler with a good dart up to the halfway line. It's the last tackle. They need a good kick here from Lyons. He drives it deep. It is a good kick. Not quite good enough. Still got plenty of distance out of it. Well, there's a chance here. The ball was passed back by McDonald to Hoppy. Hoppy couldn't hold the pass. So a real chance now for Manny to uh, drive that last nail in the coffin. And here it was, Darrell McDonald bringing it out of his in-goal area. The chase arrived, and Hoppy wasn't expecting it, and I suppose why would he? So that could be the mistake of Brakes Canberra. We'll see. Manly had the ball from the scrum. Lions. Bad throw back from Lions. Very lucky to get away with it. O'Connor. And O'Connor says to Cliffy, just take your time. Manly leading 15-14. In this position, you would think Manly be looking for the try rather than any more field goals. Grieve. Great Five one. metres out. Canberra, a pin on the far side. Tuvi goes wide. Mullins comes up quickly. Tony Arlo. And it goes on the wing to O'Connor. Stepping. Can't get his pass inside. Desperate defence. Great tackle from David Ferner. Now it's Ridge. Meninga buries him. Last tackle. They're only a few metres out. O'Connor, a little kick, Meninga's there again, reminiscent of last year's grand final. Yep. Meninga on the goal line, got down for the ball. Poor option by Michael O'Connor, we were talking about this before, that they would have been better advised passing the ball two out and squaring that little rubber in behind into the in-goal area. Yeah, I think his uh, intention was right after, he wanted to get an in-goal, but... Uh, the too much traffic, John, there. Yeah, it was a bit too much. Canberra can't afford a mistake here. McDonald. The fifth tackle. Stewart with the kick, getting it away, and it takes the bounce over Ridge's head. And the Raiders try to get down there quickly, but Ridge able to get 35 metres out from his goal line. It's 15 points to 14 in favour of Manly, and there's five minutes to go. Which team is going to continue in 92, and which one's going to be finished in five minutes? Five metres short of halfway. Iro plays it to O'Donnell. It goes to Bella. No fouls football from Bella, but he makes ground. Hasler. And there's the difference in the tackle count. Manly have had to do a lot more work than Camber, but they're doing it well in the second half. Why did I come off, Bella? Jones running off Lions. Two Canberra players back on the touchline as O'Connor kicks it down to McDonald. He'll be more careful this time, will he, or not? He goes back towards Hoppy and holds onto the pass as Lyons is all over him like a rash. Canberra move it out to Maguire. Michael Maguire to play it back. Gary Coyne gets out of the 22. Stewart works it inside. Good verse from Hetherington. Paul Osborne's on. Wood tries a little kick through. Adventurous kick. Manly have got it. Mullins flying through and Tony Iroh beat him to the ball. What a... But Tony Iro is injured in the tackle, either that or playing for time. And the referee will ask O'Connor to play it. Well, Tony Iro had to really recover for that chip. He had to hurry himself, and uh, it was probably Canberra's last throw of the dice. I really think if Canberra are to lose this match, they blew it about 15 minutes ago where they threw the ball around in their own half rather than kicking. They had a gale at their backs, they didn't use it. Three minutes to go in the match now. There's John Greave. He's had a fine game today. And Greave down. Referee calls time off. The referee will ask O'Donnell to play it. Greave in trouble. Tony Iro seems to have recovered okay. Manly slowing the game down either way as Mestrov makes no mistakes. Greave's still down, so there's no doubt that he's hurt. Back it comes. 
to Ridge on the fifth tackle. Up it goes now. Gale is back at fullback. Gale has just come onto the field. Steps through and can't go all the way. Meninga a dummy half. The green machine trying to stay in the game here. The best play now is still the kick early. Yeah, they've got a few numbers out here, the right. They're going to swing it and go for it. They're Meninga. Dummies inside the cracker. Meninga wants Maguire inside. He had to force him to go in there. I think Mark Maguire, Michael Maguire seems to be reading Meninga. They swing it wide again. They've got numbers on the far side this time. Wood. Dummies to Hetherington. Inside to Stewart. Taken out of his hands by Ferner. A goose step from Ferner. And he's still going well. Now he gives it to Maguire. He's got to come back inside this time. Away from the touchline. Just inside the Manly half. A minute, 36 seconds to go. Canberra down by a point. It's Wood. Mullins. Men inside. Brett Mullins is playing great football in this half. And it comes to Oz, but he's crunched by Roberts. Roberts thundering in with a tackle. It's the last tackle. Stewart runs it. It goes to Croker. Inside to Gale. The pass bounces off Croker's chest. The referee will play the knock on. Well, in fact, he'll play a handover on the last tackle. So Manly have six tackles to play out. Yeah, strange situation there. Probably Canberra a little bit unlucky that the Manly players were offside. The ball going off the Jason Croker there, bouncing off, and that was certainly Canberra's last chance. And Manly with a minute to play out here. And it looks as if Canberra, the 87 grand finalists, the 89 and 90 champions and the 91 grand finalists have been in the finals for the last five years, but it doesn't look as if they will be this year. Certainly been some good performances for Manly. Uh, Jeff Tooby's had a sensational game. But Matthew Ridge certainly means a lot to this Manly side. Lions just playing the clock right down. Tim Sheens knows it's all over. A valiant effort from his team, but I really think their tactics have killed them in this second half. And a couple of costly errors. Basic, unforced type handling errors. Manly now, even the Canberra crowd, counting down the last three seconds of the match. O'Donnell runs from dummy half. The siren sounds. O'Donnell's still going. Osmond chasing. He's lost the ball. The referee says it's all over. It's all over for Canberra. And Manly continue. They've won 15 points to 14. So the Manly Sea Eagles here at Bruce Stadium register the win. And what a valuable two points. It takes their premiership tally to 18, keeping their hopes of a semi-final berth alive. In this, the race for the 1992 premiership title. It certainly was a thriller and a chiller. And Manly won 15-14, two tries apiece. The field goal of Matthew Ridge made the difference out there today. We're just about out of time. So let's have a quick look at tomorrow's games. Coming up tomorrow, have we got them there? No, oh, we've lost them, so we haven't got time to get my tips. You're going to lose money this week now that you haven't heard them. Next week, Balmain versus East. Hope to see you then. Good afternoon, Angela Pierman with ABC News. Speculation that another military strike is about to be launched on Iraq has increased, with George Bush cancelling holidays to meet military advisers at Camp David. The threat follows Iraq's refusal to cooperate with UN weapons inspectors. United Nations attempts to relieve the Bosnian town of Gorazde have failed. A supply convoy has been halted by landmines outside the town, which has been besieged by Serbian forces for four months. Colombian President César Gaviria is under pressure to resign following the escape from prison of cocaine baron Pablo Escobar. The head of the country's air force has already been sacked since the escape two days ago. And two children kidnapped from Australia by their Malaysian father are now believed to be in Indonesia. The children's mother has appealed for United Nations help in the custody battle. Details at 7 o'clock. Time now for sports news.
today. The All Blacks back in touch. And women's lacrosse, a push to expand. Hello, I'm Karen Tai. Thanks for joining us. Also today, an Olympic Eye preview from Barcelona. Friday night football, plus our regular wrap-up of the day in sport. First, though, to racing and the feature event at Doombin today was race six, the Breeders' Classic. The track was dead, with Sea Wind starting favourite at five to four on. Beautiful run on the inside, and he's charged through to join Grand Republic now. Into third place is Sprightly Jet. Where is she? She's back in the field. He has to bring it to the outside. She's starting to wind up now, but oh, I think she's giving them too much start. Hula Action has raced away. Look at her fly. See what he, but she can't catch him, I don't think. Hula Action in front, and he's held on to win a violin. See when he's second. Grand Republic third. Hula Action at 5-1 to one ahead of the favourite Sea Win. Grand Republic coming in third at 33s. To Melbourne now, Mooney Valley race four, the dominant Hiskin Steeple. In front of Constitution Hill, in third placing is Yerengi. It's another nugget coming up towards the last. Jump it and you've got the Hiskins. Another nugget comes to the last. Over it well by two links, Constitution Hill. And then Yerengi, another nugget, is holding on. Constitution Hill tries hard, but another nugget. Another nugget by a long neck, Constitution Hill. Unbeaten over the big fence is another nugget at threes ahead of Constitution Hill at 10 to 1 and Rangi at fours. Now to race five, the 75th anniversary stakes. Into the straight now from Makeup Lady and C Zephyr. Then came Grey Rose and Belinci. Swayora in front, 100 metres to go from Makeup Lady and C Zephyr. Swayora's drawing away on the run home and Swayora will go on and win it by about three lengths. Good go, the miners. Makeup Lady and C Zephyr. Number seven, Swayora at 14 to 1 ahead of Makeup Lady at 20s and C Zephyr at Six to one, unplaced favourite Tacoma Girl. All having already lost the Bledisloe Cup and suffering their biggest ever defeat this week against Sydney. The pressure was on the All Blacks this afternoon in the third and final test against Australia at the Sydney Football Stadium. They responded and despite a late try by Australia, it was the All Blacks who finished winners by three points, 26 to 23, the Wallabies' first loss in a year. Wallaby skipper Nick Farr Jones had plenty to smile about, family support in the stand, and a world record 35 times as captain. But straight away, the All Blacks wiped away the smiles. Beautiful skills, little, fabulous try. New Zealand ahead 7 0, so determined they'd give away a penalty to snuff a certain Australian try. All Black Grant Fox was right on line. Superb kick. New Zealand lead 10 6. Wallaby workhorse John Eales was forced from the field with a hip injury. A loss which may have inspired the Australians. Nick Farr-Jones puts his head down. Intensity continued in the second half. Sam Scott Young knocked himself out of play. And Troy Coker lashed out after an all-black punch. But sustained pressure finally rewarded Jamie Joseph, taking the all-blacks ahead 23-13. The All Blacks were unlucky with this disallowed try. Oh, great defence. Great try. And Australia very lucky with this. Anthony Herbert scores off a forward pass. That pass is forward. That pass is forward. Anthony Herbert. Years of preparation come to fruition in just under 12 hours when the Games of the 24th Olympiad, that should be 25th Olympiad, open in Barcelona. As the BBC's Rob Bonnet reports, more is at stake than just medals. The media outnumber the competitors, with one American TV network alone paying £225 million for the rights. In a style-conscious city, they'll get designer pictures from designer venues. Though not, it seems, a glimpse yet of Ben Johnson missing last night, but now at least in telephone contact with the Canadian Olympic Association. The value of the spin-offs is incalculable. This is just one. Kobe, the game's mascot on signs, badges and stickers everywhere, and now in cartoon form. And finally, the sport is no longer incidental. The football tournament has already started. Italy beat the USA 2-1 at the home of the European champions, but elsewhere, the Americans are expected to dominate. Michael Johnson looks set to replace Carl Lewis as the individual star of the games. With Magic Johnson and the rest of American basketball's top names already established as the top team. They have arrived and therefore will win. But tomorrow, the opening ceremony, which has already been rehearsed, according to one official, there won't be a dry eye in the house. 
opera and spectacle are as certain as the ignition of the Olympic flame, even if, as forecast, it rains. And back home, a Sydney high school has held its own Olympic day. Students from Condor Park High in Sydney's west took advantage of their various ethnic backgrounds with a display of national dress and dance. Also, a message of support for Sydney's Olympic 2000 bid. Dual Olympian Karen Dalton related her experiences of representing Australia in basketball, but attracting most attention was a variety of sporting displays. From basketball to soccer, from gymnastics to volleyball. Cycling's most prestigious event, the Tour de France, is set to be recaptured by defending champion Miguel Indurain. The Spaniard virtually sealed the event with victory in the 19th stage of the event, a 64-kilometre time trial. Indurain finished 40 seconds ahead of his nearest rival in the trial and now holds an overall lead of four minutes with just two stages remaining before tomorrow's climax on the Champs-Élysées. Indurain's closest challenger is Italian Claudio Chiapucci. Recent debate as to whether women lacrosse players should wear helmets has given publicity to a sport which traditionally receives very little. Yet the Australian women's lacrosse team are former world champions and currently ranked third in the world. Tomorrow they line up in Sydney for the last of a four test series against the world champion American team. It's fast and it's free flowing. It's wonderful. <laughs> Here's Cheryl Crow. Now this perhaps could be the last chance. Australia stream forward, Babbage. There's just so much uh, individuality and creativity that goes with the sport. It's just fabulous to play. Really fun to watch too. She'd be pretty impressed about the performance so far. Now that's a quick shot and a brilliant shot too in front of goal. I've um, lived in Williamstown pretty much all my life and Williamstown happens to be one of those sort of rare areas in Australia, I guess, where lacrosse is very big and um, as many people will ride around with a lacrosse stick on their bike to go and have a throw as you will a netball or a football. It's a sport which has found popularity in concentrated pockets of Australia. Much like Aussie rules, lacrosse is most popular in Victoria, Tasmania, South Australia and WA. Clubs could only dream, though, of similar public recognition. One of the reasons this month's tour by the world champion United States team has been organised. No reason not the person can. <coughs> America are number one in the world, Australia are number three in the world, and there's only been a goal between them in the previous matches. Judith Horman is president of New South Wales Lacrosse. Her aim, to reintroduce the sport to a state which hasn't held serious competition since the 1950s. Hosting tomorrow's final test in Sydney is the first step to achieving that. This is now chance here for Lee Middlehouse, the score for Australia. A 12-a-side game for women, lacrosse is based on the skills of catching, throwing and shooting with a specially designed stick. I use a wooden stick, which is a more traditional stick, and the design hasn't really changed uh, over the years other than adding a second throw string which is supposed to add a little more control, a little more strength to your shot or pass. Now Mandy uses a plastic stick which some people find to have a little more power and a little more uh, control with the ball and it really it's a personal preference. Recent debate has focused on potential danger in the game and whether women should be given the option of wearing a helmet, something which isn't currently permitted. Unlike the men's game in which protective gear is worn, body contact isn't permitted in women's lacrosse and that's the way most players would like it to stay. There may be some teams and some players who, who wish to make it that way, but overall, especially in the States, it's not the case at all. There's no need for us to go towards the men's game. We have a great game as it is. Uh, there's probably, as in any sport, you've got to progress and there may be certain modification of rules that we'll debate for a long time, but no, the game's great as it is. In rugby league last night, an inspired performance by Bulldogs captain Terry Lamb has kept his side's semi-final chances alive after a 20-point hammering of Balmain. For the Tigers, the 30-10 loss has virtually ended their playoff aspirations. Both teams needed a win to keep their semi-chances alive and Kiwi star Jason Williams gave the Bulldogs plenty of hope. But the Tigers were just as determined. Prop Derek McVie brushing all aside to even the odds. 6-4 to Canterbury at the break. Then Terry Lamb took charge. Broken shy for Lamb. Long ball for Williams. Put away your 
In his testimonial year and hampered by injury, the Bulldog skipper kicked his side to a 12-4 lead. With Balmain pinned down for most of the second half, the Bulldogs were running wild. Halfback Craig Pollamounter took it to 16-4, while the deft boot of Lamb gave Williams his third. Tigers coach Alan Jones remained tight-lipped. One consolation, a late try to Tim Brasher. Final score, Canterbury 30, Balmain 10. Possible semi-spots for both, only if they can win all of their five remaining matches. And this afternoon saw Canberra striving to defeat Manly at home to remain in the race for a finals berth. And to see if the Raiders are still in contention, it's a very good afternoon to Warren Boland. Yes, Karen, it was do or die and Manly are the survivors and Canberra are finished for the season. There was only a field goal in it in the end, just the one point. Manly winning 15-14, two tries apiece, goal kicking equal. Matthew Ridge's field goal gave Manly that one point victory. And this is Manly's second try. Great by O'Connor. O'Connor beats Stewart and he finds Hancock outside. Down the touchline goes Hancock. Great race. He beats Mullins' tackle. Superb try. Great wingers finished by... Frank. Manly led 14 to 8 at half time, but they ran into a strong wind in the second half. So it was a game effort by the Seagulls. But Canberra's tactics in the second half were all wrong, in my opinion, and they butchered it. Thank you, Warren. Well, the finals of the AFL may still be four weeks away, but excitement is rapidly building. Last night, nearly 90,000 fans crowded into the MCG to see Collingwood take on league improvers Essendon. The Bombers' finals hopes were severely dented, though, when Collingwood came from behind in the last quarter to run out 22-point winners. If the conflict didn't come in pairs, it came in layers. The first three quarters would have done a final proud. It was close, but efforts like Severio Rocker produced for the first goal of the match kept the Pies dominant. Gary Pert played his part, netting powerful Paul Salmon away from certain goals. And the Pies fullback also found his way to the business end for this effort. Kicks for goal! That eliminated the Bombers' one-point lead in the final term, and they weren't seen again. Tony Danaher certainly wasn't seeing much after this meeting with Gavin Krasiska. Collingwood made the match points comfortably, leaving them in second spot, condemning Essendon to an end-of-season frenzy. And today's match of the day saw West Coast set the difficult task of defeating ladder leaders Geelong at home. Fitness back into your legs. Handley, a lovely kick into play, looking uh, for Barnes. It's over his head. opened a 20-point wind-assisted uh, lead in the first quarter, yes, increasing it to 42 midway into the third. The Cats fought back eight. hard. The Here's Eagles withstood the, the pressure, the landing a valuable victory, 15-6-96 to 12 5 You have served us well for many years, but there is no reward for you. This incident is too sensitive. I'm sure you understand. See that his body is found in the British sector. Would you like some of this? It's fresh orange juice. Yes, please. Vienna. This is Vienna? Yes, you're safe here. From what? John, he should rest. Yes. Are you hungry? No. I would like to sit. Tell me, why am I here? Who are you people? It's very complicated. After you're arrested. Oh, please, I'm not a child. I was given drugs, yes? Yes. Yes. Why? We did it. We were at the company's guest house, and he's in the next room. Oh, that's fantastic. How did you do it? Oh, no, no. Save me the details for later. We got too much to do. Uh, where's Michael? Oh, this is incredible. Michael is dead. Michael is dead? Oh, God. oh come on. What happened? He was killed in Berlin yesterday. Oh, no. Jeez. Oh, Kathy, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say. Anyhow, look, uh, I don't want to talk about it now. Uh, 
Like you said, there's too much to be done. I'll leave my crew tomorrow morning because I can't do anything else without them. I thought what I'd do is start with a small interview with him and we're discussing his background, uh, the escape, and hopefully I'll get him to reveal the secret deals that were offered. Right. Uh, uh, listen, I'll be there with the crew tomorrow. How do you feel? I have sat here and heard you, young lady, and now I understand. Mr. Hess, I would like very much to... No, to... please, I would like to talk. Do me the kindness of listening. What I have done in my past is done. Whether I regret or not is not something I discuss with you now. I have had a long time to think, so many years, so many things to think about and to remember. I admire your effort to free me, but I think it was not all done for me. Eh? It was done for you, too. Well, it, it was done for all of us, but uh, you don't belong in prison anymore. Ah, uh, there are those who would disagree with you. What's your name? Who are you? My name's Alex Faulkner. I'm a professional mercenary soldier. Oh, and who am I to question that? But I know what you will all ask of me. You think I have been eager to tell my story these many years, to tell what things I know. Yes, I have thought of that. And long ago, I asked myself, why? What difference will it make? What good can it do? It could change the course of world history. <laughs> you think that? <laughs> I really change history for the better or the worse? This is just a story from the past told by a relic which people may or may not believe. And how will it help the world if they do? So best that it dies with me. I cannot help you, and I will not. I'm only an old man now, and soon I will die. So I ask this favor of you. I want to die at home. And the only home I know is my cell in Spandau. What I have left to me there is solitude, and a place that is familiar. I know nothing of your world. I'm afraid of it. And I have long ago accepted mine. Their life is a routine, I understand. The quiet death awaits me, and this is my only reward. Please, take me home. Nothing more to say. I'm very tired now. Come. It may help you to bed. Oh, yes, please. Uh. It would be difficult for me to count the number of people who died on this rescue operation. I can think of at least... 19. There were probably more. I didn't ask to be rescued. It would be impossible for me to count all the people who died all those years ago because I was what I was. Thousands, millions. I don't know. Only know. I don't deserve to be free. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Ah, thank you. The French, 
They will send me back to Spandau? Yes. Ah. It is what is that damn word of yours? Enigma? Yeah. An enigma that a free man wishes to return to prison to die. You don't understand it, do you? Well, we all make our own prisons of one kind or another. Yours just happens to have bars. wise man once said. Toodle Pope. Where are you going? Well, apart from gaining access to an establishment that sells brown Scottish liquid, I have the faintest idea. Goodbye, Alex. Take care of yourself. Sure. Ain't you splendid? <laughs> oh, by the way, lovely party. Thanks most awfully. Mm -hmm. 